Montgomery, powered by Davis Law Firm. On the verge of jumping from Fox to Monday Night Football's broadcast booth, three-time Super Bowl champ Troy Aikman is in San Antonio right now. Last night, he declined to comment on the possibility of switching networks in a matter of days. However, the former Cowboys quarterback visited several establishments last night to promote his new beer, including this stop at New Beer Depot. San Antonio is a great market, and, and we hope to have a big footprint here, you know, in San Antonio. So we were here a couple weeks ago. We come back, you know, make a few stops, try to accommodate, you know, get to as many people as we can. Reports claim Aikman's deal will be five years, $90 million, or $18 million a season, compared to Tony Romo's 10-year, $180 million deal. Our Spurs are in the nation's capital to resume their rodeo road trip tonight against the Wizards with just three games left before coming home to the AT&T Center. Of the 23 games left in the regular season, 12 will be at home. The remaining 11 will be on the road. Right now, the Spurs are 11th in the West, two games back of the injury-riddled Portland Trailblazers for the 10th spot. That would put the Spurs in the play-in tournament and to try to make the postseason and avoid a third straight season of failing to make the playoffs. Make a push. I mean, I feel like we're good enough to be in the playoffs, and that's our goal. Um, be in a playing game and be able to get into the playoffs and, you know, make some noise. I think bringing in just recognition and, I mean, how many TV games have we had? Like, you know, that's a big deal to us. Like, you know what I'm saying? So to be able to be in the playoffs, be able to be in playing games and be able to get that publicity and just have our names out there and for people to see, like, you know, we're a talented group and we're competing every night. So um, playoff run for sure. Spurs will have to make that push for the playoffs, dealing with some spotlight from national media. That's because Greg Popovich is now three wins away from becoming the all-time winningest coach in NBA history and all those wins with just one team. Tip off the night in D.C. set for 6 o'clock at Capital One Arena. Check this out at AT&T Center. Rodeo fans lighting it up for bull riding last night. Trevor Reese on board Stonewall. Watch what happens after Trevor gets thrown. Both fighters step in, put themselves in harm's way to get that cowboy to safety. There were five qualifying rides with the best one right out of the gate. Stetson right on board. I'm a savage. And guess what? Stetson is the first cowboy to go eight seconds on I'm a savage. And for that, he gets a score of 88. And he knows it. Yeah, he does. He made it look easy. We know that, it's not. <laughs> that's right. That's a look at morning sports. Time now, 443 and 33 degrees for now. Coming up next, how Americans are trying to step in and help victims trying to get out of the war zone in Ukraine. And welcome back. It is 446. Americans are looking for ways to show their support to the people of Ukraine. ABC's Stephanie Ramos has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, we're hearing from a husband trying to help his wife get out of Ukraine. I'm scared and really stressed. Sometimes, like, I, I can't control. I still, I can't believe it. As neighboring European countries are readying to receive hundreds of thousands of refugees. We're just hearing sometimes sirens uh, and uh, noises from the sky. Uh, and um, what we had uh, next to us, uh, next city, they bombed a um, military base. Alice's husband, Daniel, who is American, works and lives in Israel. I feel incredibly helpless. I feel anxious and I feel, you know, super conflicted, right? Because am I doing enough? And coming up at 8 a.m., we'll have ways you can help. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. We're helping keep an eye on traffic for you right now at 447. There's Highway 90 at 36th Street. Very light traffic around town. We haven't seen flashing lights on any of the roads. There's 281 at 410 over by the airports. And it truly feels like February right now. Oh, it does. And Mike says it's going to feel like this for a little while longer. But Sunday's called Sunday for a reason, Mike, right? We will have more sunshine in yes. the afternoon. Yes. But yeah, you know, when you get these temperatures down around freezing and all that moisture around there mm -hmm. and it just... You can, you can have 27 layers on, I think, and it's going to, you know, sneak Still, down the back. Yes. Neck, so, so true. Yeah, bundle up, and it's going to stay this way pretty much all day long. We may gain 10, 10 degrees approximately throughout the course of the day. All right, lots of clouds out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it looks like 410 over by the airport is dry for the, uh, the time being. But we do have a couple of light showers, uh, something slightly, I don't mean to use the word heavy, because this is all very light stuff, but a uh, little bit 
less light, I'll say down there around Victoria, uh, Beeville, and then some of these light sprinkles, Floresville over in toward uh, Gonzales. And then as you can see, this is sort of uh, transitioning into some of that freezing drizzle. So we've got the, the freezing line right there just about I-10. And this is not, the impacts from this not going to be all that great. But any little bit, obviously, I mean, just even the damp roads are, can cause some problems out there. So that's what we'll have to watch out for this morning. And maybe some of it freezing on contact. Temperatures, again, we're just flirting right around freezing. 34 at the airport, but then 32 over there at Rio Medina. 31 at Valverde, 20s in parts of the hill country. And of course, with the uh, wind coming in out of the north, about 10, 15, 20 miles per hour. And that's going to stay that way throughout the day. We've got wind chills in the uh, mid 20s, low 20s, even a couple of teens out there. Here's computer model through the rest of today. And again, it's got some of this uh, little bit of light freezing drizzle primarily off to the east and northeast. <clears throat> excuse me moving up into the portions of the hill country and that'll taper a bit. Then we by later on this afternoon see a couple of more scattered showers developing around the area. It's not going to be a big deal as far as rain is concerned today, but then overnight we'll start to see more showers trying to move on in perhaps far northern portions of the hill country. We'll see some of that uh, changing over into some freezing, but just expecting everything to be in the form of rain tomorrow. Temperatures will stay in the about mid 30s starting off and we'll continue with some of those light showers throughout most of the day tomorrow. It's going to be a cold rain because we'll only make it up into the low 40s tomorrow. As far as wind chill temperatures, that's also going to be a problem. We'll stay right around 20s, 30 degrees for wind chills throughout the rest of today. Even going into tomorrow, we'll have that uh, that wind chill to deal with. Sunday, yes, it will be better. It's not going to be a heat wave by any means, but at least it's going to be out of the 40s and close to 60 in some areas. So the forecast today, we have some of this uh, light, some light showers, maybe some freezing drizzle this morning, and then still a couple of light showers are going to be possible throughout the day, although kind of few and far between. But it's just going to be darn cold out there, 40 degrees and that damp chill, still that breeze. So it's going to feel about 10 degrees cooler than that. Tomorrow we start off 35 degrees, get up to 43. Not much better. Slightly better chance for some rain tomorrow. Scattered showers off and on and perhaps a leftover to early Sunday morning. Then we see some sunshine in the afternoon, more sunshine and then back to 70 by Tuesday. Whew. Yeah. Hang, hang on, folks. We'll get there. A relief by Tuesday. Yeah, it's going to be great, isn't it? Yeah, just in time for March. Mm -hmm. yeah, First day. March starts Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you, Mike. 451, about 33 degrees. And coming up next, a look at some of the new movies hitting theaters this weekend. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick 3, 6, 7, 5, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 8, 5, 7, 4, Fireball 0. Cash 5, 8, 11, 13, 22, 27. And your Texas 2-step, 9, 20, 26, 30, bonus ball 13. Four fifty four. The Foo Fighters star in a new film and Russia's invasion of Ukraine is already being documented by filmmakers. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. That was weird. The sound of this house is the sound of album 10. If you were thinking, you know, there hasn't been a rock and roll horror comedy movie released in a while, then Studio 666 might be your jam. The film stars the band Foo Fighters themselves recording an album in what turns out to be a haunted house. Dave Grohl and Chris Shiflett tell me rock and horror have always been connected, at least in their minds. I mean, I think with most kids who grew up in the 70s, it kind of begins with Kiss, at least for me. I mean, Alice Cooper, Kiss, I think it, it begins there. Hey, Alice Cooper, Kiss, Motley Crue, Wasp, basically any band that was like covered in blood and had like meat boxes on stage. Studio 666 is only in theaters this weekend. He's here. Cyrano? Cyrano. Cyrano. Also in theaters, in limited release, it's the musical version of Cyrano, starring Peter Dinklage. You'd be about 95, though, though? Black don't crack, <laughs> unless you're using it. Tyler Perry returns as his most famous character in A Medea Homecoming. I killed two people last night after I tried really hard not to. The final season of the Emmy-winning series Killing Eve starts Sunday on BBC America. Ah. Hi. Who are you? I'm Nicolina. I'm 18. I'm from Toronto. And also Sunday, it's the debut of the 20th season of American Idol on ABC.
Russia's invasion of Ukraine is being documented by Sean Penn. He and a film crew are on the ground in Ukraine. It's a project for Vice Studios. And actress, producer, and director Rashida Jones with a birthday today. She's 46. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now, 456 and about 33 degrees for now. Hundreds of people have been killed or wounded as Russian forces renew their bombing campaign against Ukraine this morning. How the U.S. and the world are reacting coming up. Plus, how Microsoft is making Windows 11 a little easier to use on tablets. That's coming up in Tech Bytes. And ahead on GMS A6, fire destroys a historic building downtown. What local conservationists hope will now happen to make sure history is not forgotten. And taking a quick look at the roads with Trans Guides this morning, there's a look there at Highway 90 at 36 and Highway 281 at Loop 410. Things are looking good this Friday morning so far, but we will be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The largest ground war in Europe since World War II. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. The latest on the Russian attack on Ukraine coming up. And the chill remains this Friday morning. Plenty of clouds out there, too. Do we have any moisture in play? We'll talk to Mike Ostrage coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, the 25th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Happy Friday. I know yesterday, even though I knew, because I listened to Mike, I knew it would remain cold. I was still kind of hoping that it would warm up eventually. <laughs> Boy, the furnace was working overtime yesterday and into last night, Mike Ostrage. Yeah, it keeps saying the past uh, couple of days, even though you see it uh, in the graphics and see it in black and white, if you will, you walk outside and it is definitely a reality check with uh, these temperatures. 34 degrees right now and you got a wind out of the north at 10 miles per hour gusting from there. And notice the bottom number, the dew points at 26. And that's important because there uh, there is some precipitation showing up on radar right now, but there's only one spot where it's being reported is actually reaching the ground. So some may be evaporating before before it ever hits the ground. We'll talk more about that in a second. 40 high temperature today. That's it. We're going to be about 25 or more degrees below normal. The aquifer yesterday did drop down nearly a foot and the allergens. Everything is on the low side. Mold and mountain cedar. Maybe we're finally done with the uh, the mountain cedar season. Here's what it looks like on radar right now. And again, we do have some light showers. Even notice the, the transition into some of that freezing drizzle up there right around Luling and then heading in toward LaGrange. But the only uh, reporting spot right now that's putting in anything reaching the ground is LaGrange. That was at the uh, within the hour. But there may be a couple of these light showers and, you know, a couple of damp spots on the roads here and there. Anything, though, as far as any freezing drizzle is not going to be a real big deal. Wind, though, that's kind of a big deal out of the north. 10, 15 miles per hour. And then we have gusts to 20, 19 Bulverde, 23 gusting at Randolph as well as New Braun and so wind chill temperatures mid 20s and even some teens around the area and that combined with that that kind of dampness in the air and it just sneaks right down the back of your neck so a little bit of light drizzle a light shower too and some mist some of that may be freezing especially off to the northeast and to the north later on today but again it's not going to be a big deal by any stretch a couple of light showers throughout the day just sort of off and on 40 for a high temperature and then rain is going to pick up somewhat we'll have some uh, better chance for showers off and on throughout the day tomorrow mid 40s finally we are going to see some sunshine in the afternoon on sunday and we'll make it to the upper 50s pushing at 60 degrees well if 60 is going to be nice or even upper 50s on sunday details on the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen cavasos good morning sir any problems out there it's a happy friday on the roads right now mike let's take a look right now 35 north at loop 410 not a lot of folks out there this morning uh, there's 35 at caesar chavez we had showed you that shot for quite a while yesterday following that uh, overnight fire but uh, right now the morning is calm as people People are driving off, getting ready to go into their weekend. 37 at Houston, pretty empty spot there. But let's go ahead and start with the map because there were a few stalls that were being reported this morning. I-10 eastbound at Frio Street. Now, this is one of those places that you want to make sure you drive carefully because there is someone that's having car trouble out there. So give them some room to get things resolved. Let's take that drive up over here to 410 westbound at Jackson Keller. Earlier, there was an icon that indicated there was some restricted flow, meaning that traffic was coming to a slight slowdown there due to a stall. But it looks like that has cleared out and it's not causing issues anymore. Let's get that bird's eye view of the map at 503. Things are looking green again as we're getting ready to go off into the weekend.
weekend. And if you are coming here to San Antonio from any of our neighboring communities, no delays just yet. I 10 eastbound Bernie to downtown 25 minutes coming in from 281 and Bulverde. We're looking at 27 minutes for you. And right now 35 southbound New Braunfels to downtown 26 minutes. So no delays just yet. It's a quiet morning, so that gives us time to talk construction spots. That's going to be coming up in the next few moments. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Now to an Amber Alert. The Fort Worth Police Department is searching for Harmony Rodriguez. She is 11 months old and she weighs 30 pounds. She has black hair, brown eyes, and was last seen wearing a yellow and brown onesie. So police are also looking for 26-year-old Lancelot Dawkins in connection with her abduction. The suspect is driving a white Jeep Wrangler with black trim and black steps and unknown license plates. The suspect was last heard from in Fort Worth. Law enforcement officials believe the child to be in grave or immediate danger. If you have any information regarding this abduction, you are asked to call the Fort Worth Police Department. Early voting is still underway for the March primary election, but you're almost out of time. The last day for early voting is today, and polls are open between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. So key races include the Texas governor's race, as well as who will be the next Bear County judge. And if you're still in the dark about what else is on the ballot or where you can go cast your vote, just scan the QR code on your screen. It will take you to the vote section of KSET.com. Election Day is coming up on Tuesday, March 1st. And the abandoned building downtown that was destroyed by fire yesterday was in the process of becoming a historical landmark. According to the San Antonio Conservation Society, the 17,000 square foot building located at 503 Urban Loop was first built during the Wild West as a brothel back in 1883. Then in the late 19th and early 20th century, it started its history in community care. Over a century, it served as a daycare and orphanage for Lare Dito, first uh, under the Carmelite Sisters from 1914, and then under Father Flanagan's Boys Town from uh, 1990. The Conservation Society hopes some sort of memorial can be placed where the building once stood, so all that history is not forgotten. The former CEO uh, of ERCOT says Governor Greg Abbott is to blame for higher prices when it comes to power during last year's storms. That's according to the Houston Chronicle. Bill Magnus made his testimony during a bankruptcy trial for a Texas electric co-op. Magnus told the court Governor Abbott told ERCOT to do whatever was necessary to prevent more ro rotating blackouts. ERCOT says that led them to keep prices at $9,000 per megawatt hour. That led to debt for many utilities, including CPS Energy, who has alleged price gouging in several lawsuits. Moving to the pandemic here locally, Metro Health is now reporting 228 new cases and eight more deaths. In our hospitals, 448 COVID patients are being treated, 113 are in the ICU, and 58 are on ventilators. Right now, you are taking a live look at Kyiv, Ukraine. This morning, many are scrambling to flee the country or just find a safe shelter as Russia continues its full-scale military attack on its neighbor. And yeah, not only do we have that live picture, I'm hearing some live audio, too. We'll continue to monitor that for you. Ukraine's president said at least 137 people have died, including 10 officers and 13 border guards. More than 300 people have been wounded so far. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, Russian troops in tanks and armored vehicles advancing on Ukraine's capital city of Kyiv, leaving in their path the wrenching destruction of war. Missiles raining down on neighborhoods. At least eight people injured Friday when a rocket struck a residential building in a suburb of Kyiv. In this apartment building in Kharkiv, an unexploded rocket caught in the ceiling. And closer to the border, this jet missile jammed in a road. You're convinced Putin's going to overthrow this government? I'm convinced he's going to try to do that. A senior Pentagon official says Russian forces have launched more than 100 missiles so far and initiated multiple ground incursions. Ukraine's president in a video message declaring Russian enemy sabotage groups have now entered Kyiv and have designated him target number one. We know that there were hit lists, so they can go in and, and, and just assassinate people. Uh, the other way to do it would be to go around the city of Kyiv and to lay siege, to, to envelop that city and basically strangle it, uh, just let, you know, turn off the power turn off the water and wait for uh, for the government to surrender. Women and children seeking bomb shelters hiding in a subway station. Men over 18 years old called to take up arms and defend Ukraine. In parts of the country, gridlock and chaos, long lines at gas stations. This American among the many trying to escape. I wasn't going to leave. We just thought it was going to 
it wasn't going to turn out like this. The on the road, it was scary as well. We saw a drone get shot down. Uh, the Ukrainians, uh, the Ukrainian military shot down a Russian drone, and we saw that. And that was quite shocking. Russia is now facing more punishing sanctions from countries across the globe. President Biden ordering a freeze on more Russian banks, cutting off Russia's industries and military of U.S. semiconductors and other high-tech products. And the U.N. Security Council is expected to vote today on a resolution condemning Russia's military aggression towards Ukraine. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Just about nine minutes past the hour, 33 degrees. And if you use the online Etsy marketplace, why you may soon see some extra fees tacked onto your bill. And a local woman celebrating her 104th birthday with a little dance. And taking a look outside with live cam, starting cold again at 33 degrees. There's no doubt about that. And you will keep your jacket all day, just so you know. We'll be right back. Welcome back, 512. I love this background back yeah. here. It's so festive. A uh, local woman is celebrating a big birthday. That's right. Miss Della Rivera turned 104 years old yesterday, and there was a big celebration. After more than 10 decades of living, she now has five generations of children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren. She was born February 24th, 1918, over in Wharton. Ms. Rivera grew up and attended school in Cuero, where she married Rudy, the man who would be her best friend and partner for 61 years. She has since soldiered on as a widow. Della and Rudy started their family in Cuero, and Della completed an LVN nursing course. She worked for many years, both in Cuero and San Antonio, after a move to the city in 1960. While still working for the state, she went back to school and obtained her degree in nursing. Then she continued to work for the state until her retirement. Friends and family say through the years, that nurse supervisor hat has been something she's found hard to take off. A big happy birthday, Ms. Rivera, from all of us here on GMSA and at KSAT 12. Looks like they had a good yeah, time. Yeah, glad to see the dancing. Happy birthday, Della. Time now, 513 and 33 degrees for now. Still ahead, Reddit launches a new way to help users find new content. Plus, Microsoft announces a new tablet-friendly taskbar for Windows 11. DreamResorts.com with savings of up to 40%. People today, they could spend half their lives over 50, but it's going to take some planning. What can you do for me? Make sure your money lives as long as you do. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Join today. Nicorette knows quitting smoking is freaking hard. You get advice like, just stop, go for a run, go for 10 runs, run a marathon. Instead, start small with Nicorette, which can lead to something big. Start stopping with Nicorette. It's 517. Welcome back. Etsy users will soon see an increase in seller transaction fees. ABC's Monica Sar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, higher fees from Etsy. The e-commerce site is hiking seller fees 30% effective April 11th. Etsy says the money will go towards marketing, seller tools, and other areas. The company announced it's up to a record 90 million active buyers. Reddit has launched its new Discover tab, which helps users with personalized recommendations. It's part of the first major change to Reddit's mobile app in over two years. The company says the Discover tab was created after users asked for better ways to explore their interests. And finally, Microsoft is tweaking its taskbar for Windows 11 to make it more tablet friendly. When using a device in tablet mode, the taskbar will automatically disappear, allowing for more screen space. When you choose to reveal the full taskbar, the icons will be bigger and easier to touch. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great weekend.
Time check 518. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos this Friday morning. It's been a nice day here uh, in the traffic lab and out on the roadways right now. We're taking a look at I-10 at Hildebrand. You can see very empty out there. Not a whole lot of folks, but uh, if you have to head out the door in the next few moments, you're essentially going to have the roads to yourself. But given the fact there are a few people out there still, take it easy. Don't drive crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and start with that wide view of the map. You can see no congestion spots just yet. And of course, we expect that 518, not a lot of people. But as we bring it in, I-10 eastbound, be able to look at it. Freya Street, there is a stall that's been there for a little while. Let's take a drive not too far from there to 410. Now, there has been some road work that's been going on for a little while that started there on February 21st. That should be wrapping on Monday, February 28th. It's an overnight deal, so 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. Crews were out there working on the roads uh, and columns, particularly because of some bridge construction that had been going on out there. Now, that's led to the double northbound main lane closure from Ingram Road to Culebra Road, so make sure you are driving carefully through there. That should be wrapping up around this time. But overall, the roads are looking fine. No real concern right now, and it's kind of nice as we're getting ready to go off into the weekend. I have a road trip planned, so this is this is good to see. This is very promising, guys. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Road Clear roads for now. But warmer climates? <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> further south. Yeah, hopefully. Well, warmer climates, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who is really considering, seriously considering doing this? Uh, who seriously did that oh, all day yesterday? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not a bad idea this morning, so Aww. yeah, just take the covers, throw them back over your head because it is cold out there and uh, we don't have anything showing up. Road looks pretty dry out there by the airport. There is some uh, precipitation being detected on radar, but a lot of this may actually be evaporating before it reaches the ground. We've got a what we call a dew point depression. The difference between the temperature and the dew point temperature is big enough to where some may evaporate. Now, also notice though that what is being picked up on radar are, uh, is starting to change over. There's the dividing line just about at 10 where temperatures drop or even aloft in the atmosphere drop down to uh, just below freezing. So that's why some of this is being indicated on radar as changing over into a little bit of freezing drizzle. So it's not going to be a huge ordeal. Obviously, any precipitation is going to cause the roads to be wet and that can slow things down. But any sort of icing is not going to be a big deal, but just be on the lookout for that. Yesterday, we only mustered 41 in the atmosphere in the atmosphere in the afternoon and uh, temperatures stayed just above freezing up there in Fredericksburg. And today, well, not going to be a whole lot much better. We're going to make it up to about 40 once again later on this afternoon, still staying in the 30s up in northern Bear County and portions of the hill country. So we'll continue with some of this light precipitation, be it in the form of rain and or some freezing rain, primarily off to the east and to the northeast, and that's going to be just in the morning hours. And then we may have a couple of sprinkles throughout the day, uh, a shower here or there, not going to be a big deal at all. Then we go in the overnight hours and we'll start to see more showers. It's not going to be a huge rain event, but uh, more of it throughout the day and a little bit more widespread as far as the coverage. And again, that will go through about dinner time tomorrow and maybe even linger on into early Sunday morning. Could have a leftover shower early Sunday morning. Temperatures again tomorrow aren't going to be going much of anywhere. Low 40s will start off in the mid 30s on Sunday and then finally some sunshine and we're going to make it into the upper 50s close to 60 and then a lot more sunshine as we go into the first part of next week. So forecast today is just going to be yeah, throw the covers over your head kind of a morning and all day long. 37 degrees, couple of light sprinkly showers here and there. It's not going to be real widespread, just one or two of them scattered about. But you know, like yesterday, we had that drizzle throughout most of the day. It was just kind of a, a nuisance and you know, some of those nuisance showers, a couple of light showers throughout the afternoon, 40 for a high temperature. We will have enough of a breeze out there to make the windshield feel like about 30 today. And then tomorrow we start off 35 degrees, 43 and a few showers. Slightly better chance for some rain tomorrow scattered about throughout the day, perhaps a leftover shower early on Sunday, and then we will see some sunshine in the afternoon, get up to 58 degrees and upper 60s, 70 to start off Monday and to start off the week, end up February, start off March. Looking forward to it. Not that mm -hmm. I want to fly through the weekend, but still the nicer weather would be nice. Right, and, <laughs> and it is nice to have the cooler temperatures before we get really into the hot stuff, but 40 and cloudy and damp, that's kind of pushing. I was thinking about that. It, it, we're probably on the tail end now of our, our colder weather and before we know it, things start blooming and warming up. About that, so. <laughs> right now 522 about 33 degrees.
and Toronto director Joe Wright talks about star Peter Dinklage and Andy Garcia explains his confusing new film Big Gold Brick that's next in your morning spotlight. Welcome back. It's Friday. That means new movies in theaters. CNN's David Daniel looks at a new take on a classic and a film with some big names in a strange title. Name's Floyd. Dr. I told me that you were a writer. Would you consider writing my biography? Biography? What I'm proposing is that you come and stay with me and my family until you get yourself back on your feet. The indie film Big Gold Brick features a suicidal writer, a bizarre family, a talking Santa Claus doll, and a cast including Andy Garcia, Megan Fox, Lucy Hale, and Oscar Isaac, who's also one of the producers and sent Garcia the unusual script. He sent it and we talked and, you know, the first converse, conversation was, uh, Oscar, I have no idea what this movie's about. <laughs> I'm intrigued. Oh, there's a lot more where that came from. Big Gold Brick is now in theaters. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now 527, still 33 degrees. And explosions continue to rock major Ukrainian cities, prompting many to flee the capital of Kyiv. We'll have the latest on how the world is reacting. Plus, gas prices going up in response to the war in Ukraine, and some areas are seeing up to $5 a gallon. And Coors Light is releasing a new beer to, quote, fight off the devil. We'll explain why. And ahead on GMSA at 6, a Texas family is able to bring their adoptive son home before the fighting started in Ukraine. How they barely got out in time. Making headlines this morning, the world reacts to Russia's attack on Ukraine as explosions continue to rock several cities, including the capital. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is chilly again, 33 degrees, and it's kind of going to stay like that all day. And a good morning to you. It is Friday, the 25th. Thanks for joining us today. Well, if you don't like the cold weather, we're sorry, but it is Friday, so cheer up, and we're expecting sun later on. That's right, sun later on. Let's check in right now with Mike Osterhage. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Going to have to wait a couple of days ago to see uh, some sunshine by Sunday afternoon. It's going to stay pretty darn chilly. Yes, we will get up to about 40 later on today, kind of like yesterday, but with all the clouds and a breeze and maybe a few sprinkles. 34 at the airport, dew points at 26. And that's important to point out because with that eight degree temperature difference right there, some of the what's being picked up on radar may actually be evaporating before it reaches the ground. Wind is out of the north at 10 miles per hour, and that's uh, the big thing that's going to catch your attention this morning. Get your attention is the, the wind chill temperatures. But here, first of all, here's what's showing up on radar. There is some light rain, and again, some may be evaporating before it reaches the ground. Lagrange within the past hour was the only spot that was actually reporting anything reaching the ground and that was mixed precipitation and you can see where the the changeover is right there just about at i-10 where temperatures you know are, are kind of flirting back and forth with freezing so we're 34 at the airport same thing ran off in Seguin at 32 obviously it's not a very distinct line right there kind of meanders back and forth and that's where we're going to be throughout the rest of the morning so some of this some light sprinkles and then maybe some of it freezing, but it's not going to be a big deal as far as the freezing rain is concerned. Any sprinkles obviously are going to make the roads kind of damp and slippery. Wind chill temperatures though, that's the thing, like I said, is going to get your attention. We're in the 20s and even some teens and we're going to keep a good breeze around throughout the day. So that 40 is going to feel more like 30. Couple of stray showers, just one or two of them out there. Not a big deal. Better rain chance tomorrow. We'll only make it up into the uh, low 40s again, but then finally some warmer temperatures by Sunday. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's it like on the highways and byways? So far, so good, Mike. Right now, 16 to 4 at Old Hausman. We can see that it's pretty quiet, almost looks like a ghost town out there. But let's get a closer in look with Transguide Camera, see how the morning has been shaping up at this hour. I 10 at 35, you can see just a few folks out there maybe going to grab that cup of coffee, make sure it's a warm cup of coffee today. Uh, I 10 at Frio, you can see not really a lot going on this morning, but be on the lookout because we still have that stall that we told you about in the eastbound lanes of I-10 right at Frio Street. It's not been causing problems, but make sure that you are driving carefully, especially when you see someone that is having some trouble out there. Make sure that you give them plenty of room, move over or slow down. That is the law. Let's go ahead and get a wide look at the map right now. 533, not concerned about any congestion that's building up just yet, but we know by minute and minute that the minutes that go by, we're getting
getting closer to that morning rush, so we'll likely see it. So enjoy the way that the roads are looking right now while you can. Uh, right now, drive to San Antonio, no delays. Seguin, pretty green. I-10 westbound, 29 minutes. 23 if you're traveling in from 87 and Lavernia, and right now, 28 minutes coming up from Floresville. No problem there, but we'll continue to keep a close eye on the roadways, and we'll have those updates right here on GMSA. Steph? Thank you, Stephen. This morning, San Antonio police say cell phone video has helped them solve the mysterious death of a child. They say it highlights a disturbing case of abuse, including the actual cause of that four-year-old boy's death. The child's father has been arrested. Our Katrina Weber is live near downtown with all the details. And Katrina, you say this initially involved the victim being blamed for causing his own injuries. Well, that's right. The affidavit says that those claims came from the suspect that he told investigators who were looking into injuries found on his son's body that the child injured himself. But police say that cell phone video shows otherwise. And their investigation led to the arrest of that suspect, 28-year-old Brandon Cervera. The police opened up this case back in August after his son Benjamin was brought to a hospital unresponsive. The affidavit says medical staff noticed bruises in various stages of healing on his body. However, the medical examiner determined that those were not what caused the child's death. The affidavit says during their investigation, police searched a cell phone belonging to another family member and found videos of the four-year-old being abused. Police say those videos showed the child begging for food and water and at one point being forced to drink hand sanitizer. They say they also searched the family's home, discovered that Benjamin was sleeping in a locked room with only a urine-stained mattress on the floor. And the affidavit says the medical examiner determined that the child died of starvation. It also mentions another person who appears to be a second suspect in this case, but there's no word yet on whether police plan to arrest that other person. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Russia's full-scale attack on Ukraine continues this morning. Right now, you're looking live at Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine, where bombings have continued. Things look calm right now, but they could change at a moment's notice. And this morning, European leaders are announcing new sanctions. CNN's Mandy Gaither has the latest on how other countries are continuing to condemn the aggression. Ukraine under siege. Russia unleashes war with attacks and airstrikes. Residents racing to safety. This subway turned into a bomb shelter. Others fleeing the country altogether. It's awful. You have to, you have to act, guys. You next. I mean, maybe not America, but it's Poland. Other countries of Europe need to act immediately. It's not normal. Those people stand seven hours with a baby on a border. Some women and children crossing the border into Poland, but Ukraine has now temporarily banned males between the ages of 18 and 60 from leaving the country. Ukraine's president says Russian sabotage groups have entered Kyiv. The enemy has marked me as target number one. My family is target number two. They want to destroy Ukraine politically by destroying the head of state. More countries condemning the attacks, announcing sanctions against Russia. The European Union says it's targeting Russia's financial, energy and transport sectors, visa policy and more. Meanwhile, the French president says he's ready to broker a ceasefire, positioning himself as a mediator between the two countries. But he accuses the Russian president of duplicity. There was a deliberate, conscious choice by President Putin to launch the war when we could still negotiate peace. I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. Meanwhile, the head of Russia's space agency says U.S. sanctions in response to Russia's attack on Ukraine could destroy cooperation on the International Space Station. There are currently four NASA astronauts, two Russian cosmonauts, and one European astronaut in the orbiting outpost. President Biden said some of the sanctions will degrade Russia's aerospace industry, including its space program. The Russian side of the USS, uh, ISS controls the station's propulsion. Russia's, Russia's space chief indicated that blocking cooperation with Russia could result in the station going into an uncontrolled deorbit and crashing to Earth. The U.S. side controls the electricity. Neither can function well the other's cooperation. A NASA spokesperson said the agency continues to work for safe operations with all international partners, including Russia's space program.
Three former Minneapolis police officers have been found guilty of violating George Floyd's civil rights. A federal jury found to Tao, J. Alexander King and Thomas Lane showed deliberate indifference to Floyd's medical needs back in May of 2020. The 12 jurors also found that Tao and King failed to intervene to stop Derek Chauvin from kneeling on Floyd's neck, which ultimately killed him. The jury deliberated for about 13 hours over two days. The maximum sentence for these crimes are life in prison or the death penalty, but federal sentencing guidelines suggest the former officers receive a lesser sentence. Meanwhile, the three also are facing a state trial for aiding and abetting coming up later this year. They have pleaded not guilty. MASH film star and Oscar nominee Sally Kellerman has died. Kellerman's son told The Hollywood Reporter she died Thursday morning after a battle with dementia. Kellerman's acting career spanned more than six decades. She received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress for her role in the movie MASH, where she played Major Margaret Hotlips Houlihan. She also earned a Daytime Emmy nomination for a 2015 guest appearance on The Young and the Restless. Sally Kellerman was 84 years old. And time now, 539 and 34 degrees for now. Still had a closer look at the bullfighters keeping Cowboys safe at the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Also next, we're gonna tell you about a unique new beer just released by Coors. And outside with live cam. Yeah, plans outdoors this weekend. Oh boy, bundle up. We will see some sun though. Mike will tell you when that will happen coming up right here on GMSA. In your morning headlines, gas prices are hitting record levels in parts of the country, especially in California, amid Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The average price of a gallon of regular is at $4.82 in Los Angeles County, a new record. That's $1.13 higher than this time last year. Many stations have prices well over $5 a gallon. Russia accounts for 12% of the world's oil supply, and the attack is triggering volatility across global markets. It's already up 40% from a year ago, and analysts say oil and gas prices are likely to head even higher. Coors Light blessing its fans with a beer to fight off the devil. The adult beverage brand shared on social media it's giving away free cans of its new Coors Almighty Light. The company says Coors Almighty is made with real blessed water to quote ward off demons and keep your soul safe. <laughs> Seriously, their website claims the limited batch is blessed by an ordained minister. New product part of a team up with the Foo Fighters to promote the band's new horror movie Studio 666. In honor of the movie, Coors is giving away 666 free 24-ounce cans of the beer. Is this really a good idea? <laughs> we <laughs> are, shall see. Are we, are we messing with the devil? Mm -hmm. The giveaway is open in only a few states. Unfortunately, Texas is not one of them. All right, so never mind. Wow, but the movie already looks kind of interesting, so now this is, as well. Yeah, we saw a little glimpse earlier with uh, Dave Grohl in a starring role. Bizarre. Yeah. 553, 543 rather, 34 degrees. And coming up next, we visit with professional bullfighters who keep cowboys out of harm's way every night at the San Antonio Rodeo. Good morning and welcome back to GMSA 546. Bull riding at the rodeo always gets people on the edge of their seats, <laughs> but it's not just about the eight second ride. No, the adrenaline continues when the bullfighter calls attention to himself to protect the rider. Alicia Barrera visited the AT&T Center ahead of the rodeo semifinals to meet two of the athletes that fight the bulls for a living. So we welcome two of the very best cowboy lifesavers in the world. It takes guts. You know, whenever we first started out, it was like riding a roller coaster, you know. Like Skills and focus are required. If you don't love this, it's not worth it. But they say the pain. So I ended up breaking some bones in my neck. Is worth it for the job. You know, I'm a professional bullfighter. Bull bull Chuck Swisher and Cody Webster are the official San Antonio Rodeo PRCA bullfighters. We get to wake up, we get to come in and fight bulls, do what we love. Uh, this is the very best stock in the world, the very best cowboys in the business. So to be able to have your name stapled to something like this really uh, almost solidifies that you're legit enough to be be able to go on down the road and, and go to finals. Inspired by their own families, these bullfighters got their start at a very young age. From the time I was a little bitty baby, you know, I was running through the house and, and trying to paint my face with mom's lipstick and, and wearing baggy clothes. And About uh, 14 and a half, 15 years old, I was like, I'm, I'm going to be a cowboy like my dad. And they took me to a bullfighting school when I was 15. And here I am now, 16 years later. Now, 
They're sponsored athletes traveling the nation's rodeos to protect the bull riders. Stepping into the arena here at San Antonio, you know, and getting to be in front of 16,000 people just about every night, it's, it's really something that's hard to put in words. It's definitely no nine to five, but again tonight, these cowboys will have a chance to collect their checks as they step foot onto the dirt for the rodeo semifinals. It's just wheeling our chair up to the office desk and going to work. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. I don't know about you guys, but I practically wet my pants every time I see that. <laughs> I know, I get scared. You're, sometimes Mark will be reading the highlights right. you know, in an early show, and I'm there looking at the video like, oh my goodness. And I'm focused on this, so I gauge what's happening based on the reaction <laughs> I'm seeing out of my peripheral vision. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they're great at their jobs, yes. they really are. Yes, they are amazing to watch. Let's go ahead and, well, I was going to say, watch the roads with Steven now. It's 548. <laughs> I'm not ah. even kidding. I, I finished school in the, the RGV. Started here in San Antonio, finished back home in the RGV. So UTRGV. So technically, and for I'm folks a that don't know, Rio Grande Valley. Rio Grande yes. Valley, yes. yes. UTRGV is down in the valley, out in Brownsville. So I'm technically part of the clan. I just got to get there the cowboy go. hat and get on the bull. All right. Well, that's can, a you lot. Do, can you do rope? <laughs> Are you riding and roper? Or? I, no, I don't want to make myself look uh, foolish, but I can try and we'll talk maybe next year. <laughs> All right, let's get a look at the roads. We're going to keep a close eye on things here. Pretty quiet starts still, so nothing really major that's causing any concern out of there. But 37 to Southeast Military, just remember, take it slow because it is still pretty dark out in a lot of these trans guide cameras. They're 1604 at Kyle Seal. So uh, let's go ahead and start with a map because we have some stalls to talk about here. 410 Northbound at I 37. This one popped up recently. We talked about another one off of I-10 eastbound at Frio that cleared out, but make sure you are driving carefully through those areas. And quick reminder, there is some bridge widening construction that will be wrapping up tomorrow out towards 1604. Started on the 14th, again, finishing tomorrow, 9 in the morning at 5 in the afternoon. What you can expect is a westbound and eastbound turnaround closure at Loop 1604 and Chase Hill Boulevard. We expect also a full alternating turnaround closure. Only one direction will be closed at a time. So just keep that in mind. There is obviously continued construction work out there of 1604, but let's get that bird's eye view the map not looking bad as we're getting closer to that morning rush hour. We'll continue to keep a close eye on things and give you all those updates throughout the morning. So hey. wait a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been on bull. You can ride bulls. No, I, I no, but maybe a mechanical one for like five seconds. <laughs> but okay. You're talking horseback. No, oh, wait, uh, now I'm confused. You said Vaquero, You right? said Vaquero. Abo Vaquero, yeah. But that's, then you had mentioned about a bull, and I didn't. Oh, I said, I just, I'm not able, I haven't done that yet, I, but I should because yes. I am a Vaquero. Yet. There you go. That's the key word Who there. votes for Stephen <laughs> doing the story for the morning show getting on a bowl? So. Well, uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of practice first. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll try to lasso, too. <laughs> Just threw him under the bus. Yeah, he did. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. That's cool, though. <laughs> All right. Great picture. I love this with all the beautiful cardinals in that tree. Kind of looks like a Christmassy picture. I was thinking that when there's there's cardinals in there. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect shot. Uh, everything's dry out there at 410 by the airport. May have a couple of damp spots on the roads this morning. We do have some rain that's being picked up on radar. Now, the, the air is fairly dry down here at the surface, so some may be evaporating before it reaches the ground. Also, taking a little bit more down around Cuero, uh, Kennedy, and take note that right around, say, Gonzales, and call it the I-10, is where the changeover is on either side of that into what radar is indicating as some uh, light freezing drizzle. It's There's nothing really being reported at the surface reporting station, so like I said, some may be evaporating before it reaches the ground. Don't be surprised if there is a little bit of that and even going up in toward uh, I-35 towards San Marcos, a little bit of that light rain as well. So that would just obviously you know cause the problem as far as making the roads kind of damp around there, but it's not going to be a huge issue whatsoever. Wind chill temperatures, that's a big issue. 21 is what it feels like. Bernie stage 19, Los Maples and Kerrville 24 out there at Randolph and that's going to be something we'll deal with throughout the rest of today. So this computer model I think handles things pretty well as far as a little bit of very very light uh, sprinkles drizzle however you want to call it like that some of that uh, changing over into some freezing but it's not going to be a lot of it by any stretch at all so this like i said is not going to be a big deal just don't be surprised if there is uh there are one or two sprinkles out there and that's going to be the case today a couple of light showers here and there but then rain chances We'll start to pick up somewhat as we go into tomorrow and off and on throughout the day 
scattered about the area. That's going to be the better chance for some rain. A couple of those may linger on into Sunday and then things will start to clear on out. So here's the uh, showers and few of them, more of them off to the uh, east of us. And then, boy, I'll tell you one thing. Once again, we are on the tail end of a massive, massive winter storm system that's dumping a whole bunch of rain and everything else up there to the uh, northeast. And then once we get past tomorrow, that's what's in store for the next couple of days. Not much out there and some warmer temperatures and we will see some sunshine to finish up uh, February and go into March. 37 degrees today at noon, so it's still going to be very cold. We'll still have a wind chill to deal with. A couple of light sprinkly showers here and there. Again, not a big deal at all. And then 40 for a high temperature today. One or two of those light showers tomorrow. That somewhat better chance for some rain, about 40% off and on some uh, showers throughout the day here and there. 43 for a high temperature and we'll make it up to 58 finally on Sunday with some sunshine in the afternoon, perhaps a light shower left over early in the morning and upper 60s, low 70s to finish up February and start off March. Very good. Well, you know, we're not going to have the winter, you know, for long in our area. So I guess maybe we can enjoy the next couple of days. Since the end is in sight, yeah. okay. Yeah, we can appreciate that. that. As long as there's a log to put on the fire. That's True. right. 554, about 34 degrees. And let's look at your winning lot of numbers. We have a 675, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 8574, Fireball 0. Here are your cash five numbers, 8, 11, 13, 22, 27. Texas two-step, 9, 20, 26, 30, and a bonus ball of 13. up here on GMA. We have to talk about the storm moving through the northeast. Now we've got sleet and freezing rain. I'll be tracking that and the cold, but then the developments in Ukraine. Russian troops are closing in on the capital. There have been blasts and explosions rocking so much of that country, and there are tens of thousands of people, now refugees, as they cross over into Poland. We've got folks all over the region to bring us the very latest. You'll see it right here on GMA. And the latest also here on GMSA. Also coming up in our next hour, Pre-K for SA looking to fill a number of positions. We'll tell you about their upcoming job fair. Avoiding retirement mistakes. Financial experts debunking some myths that could hinder your long-term financial plans. Stephen is in the house tracking traffic for you. Loop 410 and Perimbital on San Antonio's northeast side. And Mike is talking about a chance to see some sunshine and warmer temperatures in his extended forecast. We'll be right back. The world is watching to see if the U.S. will do more than hand Russia sanctions for attacking Ukraine. That story straight ahead. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting at a cold 34 degrees, but you will need your jacket all day long today. Live from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Friday, February 25th. Happy Friday. It's time to get coffee. And when you get coffee, no iced coffee today. It's all about having a warm cup this morning. It was bone chilling for a lot of folks around here yesterday. And Mike says that trend is likely going to continue. Yep. Oatmeal this morning and grilled cheese and soup later on this afternoon. Sounds pretty good. Yes, good menu. Because it's just one of those. Yeah, with the, the damp chill out there and temperatures hovering right around freezing layers and layers and layers and still you get chilly with it. So we don't have anything showing up on radar or excuse me on the roads right now. There is some light precipitation showing up on radar and some is starting to change over into a little bit or at least what's being detected on radar changing over into some light freezing drizzle uh, light freezing sprinkle here and there. But a lot of this is actually uh, evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. There haven't been a lot of reports of anything on the ground. There are obviously a few of those showers down to the, uh, the southeast and one or two of them throughout the rest of the morning, a couple of damp spots on the roads, but for the most part, uh, most folks are not going to be seeing anything as far as any sprinkles and or freezing drizzle this morning. Temperatures, the dividing line is just about northern Bear County, say I-10 into the northern portion of the county, obviously below freezing up there around Bernie Stage and Bull Verde, 34 at the airport, but it could be freezing in, in your backyard. And then, of course, we've got the wind chill to deal with down in the 20s and even some teens, and we're still going to have enough of a breeze today to keep those wind chills 
you're going to take notice of them. Everything's on the low side as far as the allergens. The updated count's going to be coming out in about uh, about an hour, hour and a half or so. Temperatures this morning right around freezing. You know, a couple of degrees either side of that. Obviously, 20s in the hill country. Northerly wind at 15 to 20 miles per hour. So it is going to still stay breezy enough to keep those wind chills around, like I said. And then we'll make it up into the uh, mid upper 30s today at noon and top off with a high temperature up to 40. One or two showers just here or there scattered about. Rain chances are not great tomorrow. They are going to be improving though. Or not great rain chances today. They are going to be improving a little bit tomorrow. And then finally, we'll see some sunshine by later on Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso has been pretty quiet up to this point. What's up now? Same thing, Mike. Uh, we're getting into that 6 a.m. hour. No real big issues out there, but there are a few. Let's go ahead and just start with a look at Trans Guide 410 at Jackson Keller. You can see pretty quiet there. 410 at Vital. The morning is getting moving as people are waking up and getting out on the roadways. Just remember to drive safe. Again, no big issues out there, but there are some. Let's go ahead and talk here. Loop 410 North End at I-37. There was a stall that was picked up there a little bit earlier this morning. Thankfully, this has not caused any issues in those northbound lanes near 37. Just drive carefully through there, and you may want to make sure that you are driving carefully through I-35 Northbound at Pine Street. There was some debris that was detected a little bit earlier, so just watch out for some of that because we know sometimes that can obviously be an issue if people are not paying attention on the roadways. Let's go ahead and give you an overall look at the map at 6:03 this morning. We are getting closer to more people getting out on the roadways for that morning rush hour. So thankfully, if you have to head out in the next few moments, no delays just yet. And if you're coming into San Antonio, looks like we're in great shape. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton 37 northbound with 28 minutes, 19 coming from Highway 90 and those eastbound lanes from Castroville and 17 with little time from Lytle 35 minutes right now. Pardon me, 35, 17 minutes coming in from Lytle. So no delays just yet, but we're going to continue to watch these roads. Things are looking good so far, but we'll have those updates throughout the morning. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Right now we're taking a live look at the capital of Ukraine, Kyiv, where we've been watching since we went on the air 430 this morning. Right now it is just past 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We can tell you the Russian forces have reportedly now pushed to the edge of Kyiv, while some gunfire was reported in several neighborhoods of the capital. Ukraine's president vowing not to surrender. The White House is announcing how it wants to punish Vladimir Putin. But critic, critics say it's not nearly enough. ABC's Faith Abube has a closer look. President Biden has announced new sanctions on four more Russian banks and some Russian elites. Putin's aggression against Ukraine will end up costing Russia dearly economically and strategically. But the president stopped short of sanctioning Putin himself. And the president did not cut Russia off from the international banking communication system known as SWIFT, which would hinder Russian participation in global markets. Still, some experts say including SWIFT in the sanctions may not be as punishing as it sounds because Russian assets are effectively frozen under the new penalties. And they say sanctioning Putin himself may have limited consequences. You can be sure that Vladimir Vladimir Putin does not have any assets uh, abroad that U.S. or European authorities can attach. And he certainly isn't planning to go to Disneyland for vacation, so he's not going to worry about visa restrictions. President Biden says it could take weeks to know whether the new economic punishments have an impact. The former U.S. ambassador to NATO acknowledges Kyiv will likely fall before the Russian economy experiences any pressure. The sanctions will take time and they may make an impact on Russia's economy and on support for Putin over the long term, which is good. But that is the reason why we should have done this a few months ago. The White House has been threatening to impose sanctions on Russia since the military buildup near Ukraine began. No one expected the sanctions to prevent anything from happening. It has to show this is going to take time and we have to show resolve. So he knows what's coming. And so the people of Russia know what he's brought on them. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. If you'd like to learn more about how to potentially help the people of Ukraine, we have some links to a number of different charities and organizations on KSAT.com. As with any charity donation, be sure to check with a nonprofit watchdog group to make sure it is legitimate. And this time yesterday morning, a massive fire lit up the downtown sky as an abandoned building burned. It turns out that building was in the process of becoming a historical landmark. Flames destroyed all 17,000 square feet of that complex. According to the San Antonio Conservation Society, the building on Urban Loop was the first building built during the Wild West, and its history includes being a brothel back in 1883. It was the last remaining reminder of the city's red light district and was said to have used as a hideout 
followed by the notorious outlaws Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. In the late 19th and early 20th century, the building was used to provide community care. Over a century, it served as a daycare and orphanage for Lare Dito, first uh, under the Carmelite Sisters from 1914, and then under Father Flanagan's Boys Town from uh, 1990. Vincent Michael, executive director of the Conservation Society, says there is not a record of the exact number of children that were helped, but believes it's well into the thousands. The organization now hopes some sort of memorial can be placed where the building once stood so history is not forgotten. Another fire that broke out last night on the west side has firefighters investigating. Fire crews called to the 1800 block of West Magnolia near Elmendorf and San Antonio Boulevard around 7:30. Nine trucks arrived on scene. One, one was home. Uh, no one was home at the time of the fire. We're told home, the homeowner recently died, but her daughter is taking care of the property. Right now, there's no word on what caused the fire, and as we said, no one was hurt. The fire department is also looking into this fire at a warehouse off of the post office drive and Parambital. Crews arrived on the scene saying that they saw heavy smoke coming from behind that post office. Officials say the smoke was actually coming from a private commercial storage warehouse. They say workers were welding when some insulation caught fire and flames spread to other work materials. As crews were working to put out the fire, the roof began to sag, forcing them outside of that building. No injuries were reported. We have learned the name of a man found dead near the Pearl Tuesday night. He was 22-year-old Manuel Rice. Police are still trying to sort out details, but they say they received a call for a person with a gunshot wound in a car near Pearl Parkway and Broadway around 8.30 Tuesday night. Here's some aerial footage you see there. Uh, three other people inside the car told officers they were trying to take Rice to the hospital. They said he was shot over on the east side but could not give an exact location. At last check, no arrests had been made, and the investigation is ongoing. And we have also learned the name of the man killed in a crash on the far south side. He was 39-year-old Domingo Rodriguez. The crash happened Monday morning along Palo Alto Road and South Zarzamora Street. According to police, Rodriguez's truck hit a slick spot on the road, causing him to crash into some trees. He had to be cut out from the truck and later died at the hospital. A woman was also in the truck, but she was not injured. A former San Antonio police officer who fired two shots towards juveniles running from him and definitely suspended in 2020 is now under arrest and charged with deadly conduct with a firearm. According to online records, Oscar Cruz Jr. was arrested last night. According to records, Cruz has received had received the indefinite suspension tantamount to firing for an incident. He was called to in the 9500 block of five forks in March of 2020. He responded to calls about two teens pulling on vehicle door handles. Documents show the officer tried detaining one of the juveniles who ran away from him. During the chase, Cruz, we are told, pulled out his service weapon and fired two rounds in the direction of the suspects. Cruz was also hit by an object thrown by one of the juveniles. Cruz was handed the termination October 2020. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. And moving to the pandemic here locally, Metro Health is reporting 228 new cases and eight more deaths last night from COVID-19. Over in our hospitals, 448 COVID patients remain in the hospital, 113 are in the ICU, and 58 are on ventilators. The former CEO of ERCOT says Governor Greg Abbott himself is to blame for higher prices when it comes to power issues during last year's storm. That's according to the Houston Chronicle. Bill Magnus made his testimony public during a bankruptcy trial for a Texas electric co-op. Magnus told the court Governor Abbott told ERCOT to do whatever was necessary to prevent more rotating blackouts. ERCOT says that led them to keep prices at $9,000 per megawatt hour. That led to debt for many utilities, including CPS Energy, who has alleged price gouging in several lawsuits. Right now, 611, about 34 degrees. And selling your unique, one-of-a-kind product on SD is about to get a little bit more expensive. How much more you will have to pay and why? Getting out just in time. A local family makes it back to the state before war broke out in Ukraine and are able to get their adoptive son out of harm's way. We have more on their story. And taking a look outside with live cam, if you're a fan of cold weather, well, we have great news. It's going to be cold all day and kind of tomorrow as well. Uh, but if you're not a fan, stick around till Sunday. Things are looking a little better then. We'll be right back.
Bear County's district attorney is defying a directive that would impact the transgender community. Attorney General Ken Paxton described gender affirming treatments for children as child abuse. The governor also called for an investigation of care providers. District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says he will not irrationally and unjustifiably interfere with medical decisions made between children and their parents and physicians. Well, a week before the Russian invasion of Ukraine, a San Antonio couple left with their newly adopted special needs son. He's now in intensive care at University Hospital. Four-year-old Ruslan was born with cerebral palsy and he's malnourished. He'd been in an orphanage in Ukraine after his mother abandoned him. His adoptive parents, Theron and Kelsey Jaggi, say although they barely got out of their country with their new son, they're worried about other special needs children like Ruslan who are still awaiting adoption. So a lot of these children are sentenced to die in an institution if they're not adopted by an American family. You can watch their full story right now on KSAT.com. And at last check of the roads, things look pretty okay. Let's go check back with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, they've been okay. Friday's been off to a really nice start, so we're not spotting really big issues, uh, real big issues that are going to cause problems for that early drive. There's 410 at Perrin Vital. The only difference now is more people are out on the roadways waking up with us and hopefully grabbing that cup of coffee this morning. Let's go ahead and though take you right into the map because it all seemed to be the trending problem at this hour. 410 northbound at State Highway 151. It's all picked up right over there. This is the latest one, but we have a few that have cleared out. Also, so be on the lookout for some debris that was picked up here off I-35 northbound at Pine Street. That is still being reported according to TxDOT, so drive carefully through that area. And let's take a big drive up here over to New Braunfels. So if you are traveling southbound in those uh, 35 lanes, right now another stall picked up right there near Watson Lane East. So just watch out for that. But as we get that bird's eye view of the map at 617, looks like we are in great shape as we get ready to rush into morning rush hour. Just remember to take it easy out on the roads right now. Things are looking okay, but we'll keep a close eye on things and make sure you do the same guys thank you so much Stephen. yes thank you and not only a jacket today but maybe just a heavy jacket or a yeah. jacket and a sweater <laughs> yeah and collar turned up and definitely yeah, scarf too because All it's that. just yeah it's that damp chill we've got a breeze out there it just sneaks down the back of your neck and it's not going to get much better it's going to be a lot like it was yesterday 32 degrees this morning uh, we've been kind of going back and forth right on either side of freezing obviously a little bit cooler in portions of the hill country there's going to be some light and there is some light uh, drizzle out there and some of that may be freezing, although it's not going to be a, a big deal and a couple of scattered showers around the area today. Once again, rain is not going to be a big deal at all today. Perhaps uh, just a couple of nuisance spots here and there and a high temperature of only 40 with enough of a, a breeze out there. Boy, if this picture if it's not cold enough for you outside. This picture sure looks cold. Looks like something from Halloween. Just those gray skies out there and yep, that's what we're going to be seeing throughout the, uh, the rest of the day with that wind. A lot of clouds, obviously. It looks like 410 is pretty dry right now. We haven't seen uh, a lot of reports of anything reaching the ground. A lot of this rain and which is very, very light. And as you can see, it is starting to change over somewhat into um, a couple of spots of some freezing drizzle. It's evaporating before it reaches the ground. Now, again, there may be a couple of spots here and there, but this is not going to be a, a huge deal whatsoever. Just again, watch out for a damp spot or maybe a, on an elevated surface, a little bit of that icing, but not a big deal. 25 is wind chill right now. Canyon Lake 29 comfort 19 in Kerrville 28 out there at the airport and computer model. The rapid update model does keep a, some of that light rain and even a little bit of light uh, drizzle or freezing drizzle out there throughout the morning hours. And then it's just going to be a couple of uh, scattered showers here and there throughout the rest of the afternoon. Not a lot at all. However, we get into tonight, then the rain chances will start to pick up somewhat and we'll have a few more scattered showers around the area tomorrow and temperatures once again really aren't going to be warm in any way, shape or form. We'll start off about the mid 30s and then get up to the low to mid 40s for a high temperature. And then finally, once we get into Sunday, we will see some sunshine. Here's the uh, satellite radar loop. All the low clouds hanging around here. Here's the rain developing and some more of these showers off to the east. So if you're heading down 37, you may run into a couple of these showers. And then this is just the tail end of a huge, huge winter storm going through the Great Lakes and New England. They're expecting upwards of about a foot of snow portions, uh, say around New York up in toward Boston and further up to the northeast. So if you are traveling today, definitely check ahead. Upstream, there's not much going on. The G whiz for this morning. 
37, I think this is colder, the coldest we've seen so far this week, 37 degrees below zero, the air temperature at International Falls. It is down to five in Denver and the wind chill. At least they don't have a breeze up there at International Falls, but it's just ridiculously cold. So again, this uh, 34 right now doesn't sound too bad, does it? 37 degrees today at noon, a couple of light showers around here and again, could be a speck of some freezing drizzle around this morning. A few light showers this afternoon, 40 degrees, and we are going to continue to have enough of a breeze out there. Wind chill is going to be down around 30. Tomorrow we start off 35, 43 high temperature. Again, not a huge warm up and a few scattered showers around the area. Leftover shower early Sunday morning, then some sunshine in the afternoon. We'll make it up to 58. Finish out the month at 68. Start off March at 70 with sunshine. Come on, March. <laughs> <laughs> Just around the corner. Can't get here soon enough, can right. it? 85 Monday, Tuesday. Then we're, you know, right around 30. Down the cellar. And then, yeah, up to 68. What an all interesting within, week. All within a week. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Big changes. Thank you, Mike. 621, about 34 degrees. And Microsoft is making it easier for tablet users with Windows 11. We're going to tell you how just ahead. I'm the latest hashtag challenge, and everyone on social media is trying me. I'm trending so hard that hashtag common sense can't keep up. This is gonna get tens and tens of views. But if you don't have the right auto insurance coverage, you could be left to pay for this yourself. Get all state and be better protected from mayhem for a whole lot less. Black psoriasis. The tightness, stinging, the pain. Emerge Tremfiant. With Tremphia, adults with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis can uncover clearer skin and improve symptoms at 16 weeks. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Tremphia may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Emerge Tremfiant with Tremphia. Ask your doctor about Tremphia today. In this morning's GMA First Look, we're hearing from a husband trying to help his wife get out of Ukraine. I'm scared and really stressed. Sometimes, like, I, I can't control. I still, I can't believe it. As neighboring European countries are readying to receive hundreds of thousands of refugees. We're just hearing sometimes sirens uh, and uh, noises from the sky. Uh, and um, what we had uh, next to us, uh, next city, they bombed a um, military base. Alice's husband, Daniel, who is American, works and lives in Israel. I feel incredibly helpless. I feel anxious and I feel, you know, super conflicted, right? Because am I doing enough? Coming up at 8 a.m., we'll have ways you can help. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Higher fees from Etsy. The popular e-commerce site is hiking seller fees by 30 percent, effective April 11th. Etsy says the money will go towards marketing, seller tools, and other areas. The company announced it's up to a record 90 million active buyers. Reddit has launched its new Discover tab, which helps users with personalized recommendations. It's part of the first major change to Reddit's mobile app in over two years. The company says the Discover tab was created after users asked for better ways to explore their interests. Microsoft tweaking its taskbar for Windows 11 to make it more tablet friendly. When using a device in tablet mode, the taskbar will automatically disappear, allowing for more screen space. When you choose to reveal the full taskbar, the icons will be bigger and easier to touch. And time now, 626 and about 34 degrees for now. With fighting underway in Ukraine, U.S. officials on high alert for potential cyber attacks. Just how credible is the threat? The latest next. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuy. Things have been looking pretty calm this morning. There's a look there at I-35 at Olympia. We'll be checking in with Stephen Capasso's very soon. San Antonio police make an arrest in a disturbing case of child abuse, and they say it's all thanks to cell phone video. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. And we begin our Friday with a chill in the air. The question is, do we see any light rain 
in our forecast as we kick off the weekend. Got to get through Friday first, though. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday the 25th. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. It is Friday, so, you know, we can take comfort in that. And I guess the sun will just have to wait a little longer. That's right. Mike says they call it Sunday for a reason. Yeah, we'll finally see some by the afternoon on Sunday, and temperatures will then be, you know, it's going to help to warm us up about tw almost 20 degrees warmer than the high temperatures today as well as uh, tomorrow. Right now, 410 over there by the airport looks pretty good as far as uh, nothing on it precipitation wise. We do have some that is showing up on radar. We're going to show you that in a second. 34 degrees, so we're, again, right flirting with freezing. Uh, it's kind of walking that that fine line on either side of freezing by a couple of degrees. Two points at 26. So we've got a fairly dry layer of air. And so what's being picked up on radar, much of it is uh, more than likely evaporating before it reaches the ground. And that's why not much is being reported out there at all. We do have a few spots of some very light, light showers called it uh, drizzle. And some of that is starting to maybe change over into a little bit of a uh, light freezing drizzle. Again, not much of this is uh, reaching the ground. If it does, it's not going to be a, a huge issue this morning, but just, you know, the roads may be damp here and there. 31 Balverde, 20s in the hill country, but everybody in and around the metropolitan area right now is reporting above freezing temperatures. So that's good news for any of this drizzle that may make it down to the ground. We do have wind chills to deal with, however. 19 Kerrville, 17 Lost Maples, and 20s here in town. And wind chills are definitely going to be something going to be sticking around throughout the day. Everything's on the low side as far as the allergens. Updated count's going to be coming out in about a uh, half hour, 45 minutes or so. Some light drizzle, again, maybe changing over, mixing in with a little bit of uh, freezing drizzle in spots. And a couple of light showers here and there throughout the day. Just one or two of them, not a big deal. Better rain chance tomorrow, mid 40s, low to mid 40s, so a cold, damp day tomorrow. And then after a leftover shower early Sunday morning, we are going to see some sunshine in the afternoon and temperatures in the upper 50s. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, things have been quiet still? Yeah, pretty quiet. You know, and usually 6 a.m. is the problem hour for, for drivers because we know a lot more people get out at this time. But you can see 281 at Hildebrand, US 90 at 36. Things look nice and pretty good, right? right now, but things obviously can quickly change, especially as more people get out and morning rush is just minutes away. Let's go ahead and though bring your attention right up here just south of New Braunfels, I-35 South and it's Elms Road. We do have stalls. Stalls have seemed to be the trending issue at this hour, so make sure that everything is working properly before you get out on the roads. And if you encounter someone having car trouble, give them plenty of room to get things situated. Let's go ahead and get that wide view of the map because you can see it's, it's 633 as we're getting closer to morning rush. There's no real delays that you can expect, so yeah, Yes, take it slow out on the roads. It's always the best way to go. Let's go ahead and show you those inbound times. They're pretty much well, they're all green across the board. No delays if you're coming into San Antonio from any of these communities. So that's some good news for anyone that has to come in for work or for whatever reason. So take it slow out on the roads. Enjoy the cup of coffee, but make sure you keep both eyes on the roads and both hands on the wheel. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police have made an arrest in a disturbing case of child abuse. A man accused of starving and beating his four year old son. The arrest came yesterday and six months after the death of the child. Katrina Weber is live downtown with the details. And Katrina, do we know why it took so long for police to make the arrest? Well, based on what it says in the arrest affidavit, it seems that there was some question about what caused the boy's death. It says it wasn't until police found cell phone video that they had some of their answers. It ultimately ended with the arrest of 28-year-old Brandon Cervera. The arrest affidavit says his four-year-old son, Benjamin, was unresponsive when he was brought to a hospital back in August. Medical staff then called police after discovering bruises on the child's body. The affidavit says Cervera initially told police that his son had caused his own injuries. However, police say during their investigation, they examined a relative's cell phone, which showed the four-year-old being abused. The affidavit says the video showed the child begging for food and water and being forced to drink hand sanitizer. Police say they also searched the family's home and discovered the refrigerator and cabinets were kept locked and that Benjamin slept in a locked room on a urine-stained mattress on the floor. Now, the medical examiner determined that that boy died of starvation, and they say that it was one day before what would have been his fifth birthday. Now, the affidavit refers to a second person who also may be considered a suspect. However, there is no indication that that person has been arrested yet. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you very much, Katrina. Breaking news, U.S. fear uh, that the U.S. Ukrainian capital, Kyiv, could fall very soon as Russian forces press even closer. We now turn to the threat of cyber warfare, which could easily cross borders. The big question, could a Russian cyber attack spread to NATO countries dragging the U.S. into war? ABC's Derek Dennis has more. This morning, security officials on alert for possible Russian cyber attacks, not just in Europe, but here in the U.S. This country, taken as a whole, is not ready for a massive cyber attack. Former Trump administration Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert points to last summer when ransomware hackers believed to be affiliated with Russia shut down the colonial gas pipeline running from Houston to New York by hitting the company's billing system, not its industrial controls. Most businesses in this country are very vulnerable despite all of the good work being done by the federal government. Uh, the federal government's not protecting directly their networks. Senate Intelligence Committee Chair Mark Warner warns Putin has not yet unleashed Russia's full cyber capabilities. If the Russians launch a more massive cyber attack and, for example, try to shut down all the power in Ukraine, you can't control once you unleash cyber weapons, malware, by geographic locations. That kind of incursion could move us into what could be potentially viewed as a Article 5 attack against Poland. That, by definition, means if you attack one NATO nation, uh, you attack all of them. But would a cyber attack, which could easily extend across borders into NATO countries, drag the U.S. into war by triggering Article 5? That, again, is up to the NATO alliance to determine, but obviously a cyber attack does constitute an attack, uh, so that would certainly be a point of discussion among the NATO members. Whether it, it would actually cause a reaction, it would likely be a response in the cyber arena. In the meantime, the Homeland Security Department is urging American companies and local governments to act now to secure their networks. Derek Dennis, ABC News. And this is a reminder, today is the very last day of early voting for the March primary. The polls will be open today from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you need to know where to go to vote or if you want to look at the ballot before heading to the polls, you can scan that QR code that's on your screen right now. and You'll get a list of polling locations and see a sample ballot. The primary election day is next Tuesday, March 1st. If you are looking for a job, Pre-K for SA is hiring. They're hosting a job fair Saturday morning. Goes uh, from 9 to noon. Officials say they're looking for teachers, assistant teachers, aides, administrative associates, and substitutes. Job fair being held at the East Education Center at 5230 Eisenhower Road. Applicants are encouraged to apply before the event. Remember to bring your resume, and officials say some applicants may be in interviewed on site. Everybody appreciates them when they're fighting a war, but when they come home, well, they just kind of get forgotten. A Carnes County couple's gift to a San Antonio area veterans nonprofit could make a huge impact on veterans trying to find a home and some peace and quiet. It can also bring life to the sleepy town of Campbellton. There's just unlimited potential for what we can use it. Tonight on the Night Beat, how an old school building is being repurposed as a retreat for veterans in our area. Time check, 638, about 34 degrees. And if you're ready to call it a career, are you sure you have enough money for the future? Coming up next, some of the common things to avoid if you're planning to retire. Well, you have saved all your life and career so you can retire and be comfortable, right? But financial experts say many of us may not be as prepared as we think. And as RJ Markets tells us, a lot of people are making major mistakes when it comes to their retirement because of myths and misconceptions. It's imperative to start planning sooner rather than later. Research shows the average American will retire at age 66 and live until nearly 79. Experts suggest planning for at least 20 years of income and some say 30. Also, don't assume you'll spend a lot less. But when you're retired, you have a lot more time on your hands. So you have uh, you know, more likelihood to eat out, um, travel, hobbies, and various things that, that cost money. Also, don't expect Medicare to cover all of your health expenses. The average 65-year-old couple will spend $300,000 on health care during their retirement. And have you ever heard that you can withdraw up to 15% of your nest egg each year? The safer bet is to follow the 4% rule, which allows you to take out 4% of your accounts in the first year of retirement and increase withdrawals each year based on inflation. Don't fall for one of the biggest misconceptions. According to a Fidelity study, more than half of the respondents believe they'll need five times their final salary to retire. 
The real number is 10 to 12 times your final salary invested before leaving the workplace. So don't wait to make a plan. To build a $1 million nest egg by the age of 65, you would need to save $381 a month starting at age 25. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 6.43. And I thought we were going to have a quiet morning, but it looks like there's flashing lights at I-35 in Maine. Now, thankfully, this is not a crash that we're looking at here. Mark and Steph, this is 35 Southland at Maine. You can see that we do have somewhat of a slowdown in those flashing lights. That's because there is some sort of big rig that's experiencing some trouble there at the McCullough exit. Now, this is for drivers that are heading downtown. Looks like some first responders could be on the scene working to get this mess cleared up. But keep in mind, you're seeing that slowdown in the exit there of McCullough. So uh, Justin Horn was actually in the studio just moments ago, mentioned it. He encountered this on his way to work, so drive carefully and expect a slight slowdown there. But let's go ahead and get to the map right now because there is a slow, there's stall still reported here off 35 South and it's Holmes Road, and that has been the trending problem this morning. As we drive over here to 410, we do have another one reported of those eastbound lanes at Ingram Road. Let's get that by wide view of the map, and you can see, thankfully, we're not seeing big slowdowns in any other parts of San Antonio. We're just really seeing that slight slowdown there near downtown where people are trying to exit McCullough. So maybe wise if you have to exit that route to find somewhere different to go because you can encounter you may encounter this problem right now not looking good when it's morning rush hour because you can see that there's a line of people already waiting to maybe exit there at McCullough but there are experiencing some trouble down there guys yes sir thank you yeah a lot of trouble I think the cat behind you has the right idea <laughs> <laughs> I know it's because when you look outside you're gonna go like oh goodness gracious so uh I'm good. Frank said it's wouldn't, cold. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice just to be able to do that and just throw the covers over your head? So. Sure. Yeah. Can you do Tomorrow, that maybe. and the weather at the same time? Ooh. I doubt Or is that awkward? <laughs> I doubt it. So anyway, uh, we don't have anything showing up as far as any precipitation out there. Traffic on 410 by the airports moving along very well in both directions. We do have some being detected on radar right now, be it a little bit of some drizzle, light uh, sprinkles, and maybe changing over into or becoming freezing uh, slightly, but a lot of this is evaporating before it reaches the ground because we've got a fairly dry layer of air, the difference between the actual air temperature and the dew point. Now, we do have wind chills to deal with right now. 28 here in town, 29 comfort, and uh, wind chill is third, uh, 20 right now, pardon me, at Bernie Stage. We're going to be dealing with wind chills throughout most all of the day with winds out of the north about uh, 15, 20 miles per hour. Here's computer model. I've been showing this all morning long. I think it does a really good job of depicting what is and is not going on. Just a couple of little scattered spots with a some drizzle, a sprinkle or two this morning. And again, with those temperatures that are flirting, everybody in Bear County, the reporting areas are right above freezing. Now it could be freezing in your backyard, but then it gets obviously freezing in portions of the uh, the hill country. But Precipitation is not a big deal this morning. This afternoon, one or two light little sprinkly showers scattered about the area, and it's not going to, again, be a big deal at all. It's just going to be cold and windy today. Then we get into tomorrow. Better chance for a couple of uh, scattered showers around the area. It won't be raining constantly, but at least there's going to be some more aerial coverage to it. And temperatures will still stay in the low to mid 40s. So we're going to be well above freezing, but it's just going to be really damp and cold tomorrow. Good day to kind of hunker down inside. And that'll be the situation into tomorrow evening. Maybe even a couple of leftovers going into Sunday morning. And then we'll start to clear on out. Temperatures are definitely going to be cold lows in the 30s. And then finally, we warm up a little bit going into next week. And the high temperatures, yeah, again, only 43. We'll be knocking at the door of 60 by Sunday. And yes, we will see some sunshine. And then up close to 70. Basically normal temperatures once we get into the end of uh, February and the first part of uh, March, which is what, Monday and Tuesday of next week. 28th and the 1st. 37 degrees at noon today. A couple of, you know, a light shower here and there. Just a mention of it. And same thing later on this afternoon. 40 for a high temperature today. But the wind chill is going to be about 30. And then tomorrow, a better chance for a few scattered showers around the area. Again, it's not going to rain constantly. But we'll have a few more of them out there. And 43 for a high temperature. 58 Sunday with some sunshine in the afternoon. Leftover sprinkler to early Sunday morning. And then sunshine. And again, roughly normal temperatures to finish up the month and start off March. Nice sunshine in March. We'll take mm -hmm. it. Thank you, Mike.
And time now, 648 and a cold 30 degrees. I wanted to quickly wish my nephew Cruz a happy birthday. He's Aww. eight years old today and he's watching your up early. Have a wonderful day at school and happy we love you. Happy birthday, Cruz. And also happy birthday, one of our GMSA producers, Alex Diaz. Happy birthday, Alex. All right, it is, yes, 648, <laughs> about 34 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, how to choose a financial advisor who will make your money multiply. And outside with live cam, we'll wrap up GMSA coming up after this break. We'll be right back. Here on GMA, we have to talk about the storm moving through the northeast. Now we've got sleet and freezing rain. I'll be tracking that and the cold, but then the developments in Ukraine. Russian troops are closing in on the capital. There have been blasts and explosions rocking so much of that country. And there are tens of thousands of people, now refugees, as they cross over into Poland. We've got folks all over the region to bring us the very latest. You'll see it right here on GMA. San Antonio police say cell phone video held the answers to a deadly case of child abuse. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Police say those videos pointed them right to their suspect. They arrested 28-year-old Brandon Savetta, and they say he initially tried to blame his son for causing his own injuries. Four-year-old Benjamin died back in August. Medical staff at the hospital where he was taken called police after noticing bruises on his body. However, the affidavit says the medical examiner later determined that the child died of starvation, not from those bruises. It says police found cell phone video showing the boy begging for food and water and being forced to drink hand sanitizer. Police say they also searched the home and found the refrigerator and cabinets locked and discovered that Benjamin had been sleeping in a locked room on a urine stained mattress. Now, Brandon Savetta was arrested yesterday on a charge of injury to a child causing death. The affidavit also refers to a second person, but no indication that that person has been arrested. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Right now it is 653, about 34 degrees. And still problems there on 35 at Maine. Let's check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, I hate to say this. Pack your patience this morning. If with that cup of coffee, if you're heading down 35, you're going to see this trail of cars out there exiting McCullough because there is a big rig that's experiencing some trouble there at that exit, which is leading to a slight buildup. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you how things are looking. This is off of I-10 eastbound heading into 35 north. That yellow is where that's indicating the slight buildup there. So for driving Drivers heading that way, expect a slight slowdown. Let's take a drive over here, though. Stalls have been the issue this morning. 410 eastbound at Ingram Road. We've had that there for a little while now. But let's take that drive up here toward 35, where we had this stall that was picked up off those southbound lanes at Psalms Road. So let's get that bird's eye view of the map as we're getting closer to 7 a.m. Looks like a normal Friday morning. Just remember to drive safe. Thankfully, no delays if you are heading into San Antonio from any of these communities right now. Just a 24-minute drive time if you are heading in from Lavernia on 87. But every Everywhere else looks like we're in great shape. Remember, if you're driving down 281 in Bulverde, just to be careful out there. We know a few folks that work at the station have to head down there. So one last look at transit at 35 southbound at Maine. You can see that we do have those flashing lights. Trail of cars, not a great way to start Friday morning, but we'll get you through it. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Cold temperatures and gray skies. And let's pretty much get used to that view. And that's what it's going to be looking like throughout the rest of uh, the day. And a couple little sprinkly showers are showing up on radar. But a lot of this is evaporating before it ever reaches the ground. And notice how, yes, there is some of it that the uh, radar is indicating maybe changing over to a little the bit of freezing drizzle. Um, nothing is being reported, though, on the ground. Like I said, a lot of it is evaporating before it reaches the ground, but just be on the lookout for a couple of damp spots here and there. And we're right kind of on that line, kind of through northern Bear County, whereas the freezing line. As a matter of fact, actually in uh, Gonzales and Seguin, temperatures have gone up ever so slightly from earlier this morning, still 20s in the hill country. And then we've got those wind chills, and that's what we're going to be dealing with throughout the rest of the day. Temperatures will make it up to 40. And ain't warm at all. Northerly wind at 15 to 20 miles per hour. Again, wind chills will be around 30 degrees. And then it's going to be cold and we'll have a slightly better chance for some rain. Scattered showers tomorrow and Sunday. Finally, some sunshine. You know, Wednesday already is Ash Wednesday. Wow. Is it really? Oh, wow. Yep. Oh, wow. Tuesday on Tuesday. No yeah. wonder I saw some of the, you know, events happening yeah. this weekend before, before, before Wednesday. Wow. Whoa. 
That, that happened already. quick. Well, it went by quick, and uh, it feels like February right now, and can't wait till it feels like March. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll see you back here at 9.